I bought a new blue that I've never used before. It's by Windsor & Newton and it's called Antwerp Blue. It's a pretty transparent cool blue and I used it on this little owl painting. A little owl is on my list of subject suggestions that my patrons have given me. So this week I managed to get one painted. I did a graphite study first. And then I did a colour study. I did the two studies because I've never painted a little owl before. Oh, I think I painted one in acrylic, but not in watercolour. And I was a little unsure of how to do all those brown markings on the feathers. I know that if I wasn't careful that I would have got caught up in all the detail and I'd end up overworking it. So the two studies helped me to simplify it. When I painted the main painting, I hardly looked at the reference photo. I used the graphite study and the colour study more than the reference photo. I used Antwerp Blue, Van Dyke Brown and Sepia. I've not used Antwerp Blue before but I really like it and I think that you're going to see this colour a lot in my new paintings. I greyed it down with a little Van Dyke Brown for the background of this painting and it's created this beautiful soft baby blue colour that's really lovely. When I drew this study I drew the feet in. And then when I painted the colour study I painted them in as well. But I didn't like the way that the feet looked on the colour study so I got my graphite study back out and I rubbed out the feet and I added some shading there so that I could visualise what it would look like on my main painting. After doing that, when I painted the main painting, I decided that I'd leave them off. This is painted on Arsh cold pressed watercolour paper, 300 GSM in weight, and I stretched the paper before I used it. I worked mainly wet on wet throughout the painting so that I could get all those lovely soft paint edges on the feathers and so that I wouldn't be tempted to fiddle with it too much. When I started the main painting, I started down the bottom here with the feet. This is the area that I thought would give me the most trouble, so I wanted to get it out of the way before I started on the rest of the painting. I've wet the background with some clean water, but I've left the water off the legs. Now I'm going to use Antwerp Blue mixed with Van Dyke Brown. It's only got a touch of Van Dyke Brown in it. I paint that onto the wet paper. I switch to a smaller brush to get the paint in between the legs. And then I took the paint up further and I put some of it onto the body of the owl as well. I wanted to have a soft edge there so that I could lose the bottom of the owl so that that would help to make it look more rounded. Later when I paint that area of the owl, I'll wet past the edge of the owl so that my paint will drift off into the background and that will help me lose that edge. Here on the legs I'm softening some of the paint edges with my paintbrush. I left that to dry and then I moved up further onto the shoulder of the owl. Then I wet the background up there and I took some of that water onto the owl as well. I used the same colour, Antwerp Blue, mixed with a touch of Van Dyke Brown. I put the colour on and then I smoothed it and blended it out with my brush. I did the same thing over here. Then I wanted to increase the colour down the bottom where the legs were, just to define them a little bit more. I also wanted to add a bit more detail to those feathers at the bottom of the bird, just in front of the legs. So I'm wetting the paper with some water here. And now I've put some more of that paint on and I've defined some of those 
feather edges. So I'm still using Antwerp blue mixed with a touch of Van Dyke brown. Then I bought some more of that colour around the legs and I used my brush to feather it away and soften it. When that area was dry I decided to put some of that blue onto the body of the bird so I'm wetting this area with some water. So this is the blue again now. So that puts a bit of colour on the white paper there and it pushes the feathers back a bit so that area is not coming forward so much. I started to paint some feathers on the head and I also put a little bit more of that blue paint onto the body of the bird here where I'm painting. You can see it up higher here. Now I'm wetting it again with water and I'm going to start to paint on the brown feathers. This is Van Dyke Brown now. My paper's nice and wet. Now I've switched brushes. I'm still using Van Dyke Brown, but I'm starting to be a bit more specific where I put the paint. Starting to paint in some of the brown markings that I see on the feathers. I'm holding my brush back away from the ferrule so that I can paint loosely. I tried to keep my line drawing fairly simple and I didn't really make any marks on the body of the bird. I wanted to do that freehand as much as possible. The water on the paper is dispersing the pigment and that keeps everything loose and soft. Down the bottom here is the area where I wanted the paint to drift off into the background and give me a soft or lost edge. When I wet the paper before I started to paint, I not only wet the owl, but I also wet the background as well. So here where I'm putting Van Dyke Brown on, the brown paint is drifting off into the background, which is giving me that soft paint edge there. When that area had dried, I re it again with some water so that I could start to paint some sepia over the top. I've switched down to a smaller brush and this is sepia that I'm using. I do the same thing that I did with Van Dyke Brown. I'm working freehand on the wet paper. Here I've noticed that the paint is flowing onto the wing where I don't really want it at this stage. So I'm using a wet brush to take it off. Now I'm starting to paint in the wing feathers. I do that the same way. I wet it with water first. Then I use Van Dyke Brown on the wet paper loosely. Don't really have many lines there to follow. I'm just doing my own thing with it. And now I've got sepia. I painted a few feathers up the top there negatively, so I painted around them rather than on them. I'll paint a few more dark markings on there. I generally paint the sepia over the top of the Van Dyke brown so that I don't lose all my white paper. I painted in the brown feathers on top of the head in the same way. I painted them on wet paper with Van Dyke brown. Now I've wet the eyebrow feathers with some water and I've got some of the Antwerp blue mixed with Van Dyke brown and I'm painting that over the top of the wet paper. These feathers are white so I don't want to lose the white of the paper but I needed to break the white up a bit. I did the same thing on this other side. So working on wet paper again.
coming back to these feathers on top of the head I want to paint some sepia over the top of them the same way I did on the body and the wings so I'm wetting that area with water so again with the sepia I try to keep the paint off the white areas of paper I don't want to lose those so this sepia goes over the top of the Van Dyke brown in places, not everywhere, because I still want to see the Van Dyke brown. So that adds some darker areas and creates a bit of variation to the brown. The eyes I paint in with some new gamboge. I paint them on dry paper. And then while they're wet, I'm going to drop a darker colour on the top. I've mixed some of the new gamboge with Antwerp blue to make a green. And I paint that onto the top area of the eye while it's wet. I do the same thing on this eye as well. I soften the paint edges so that I don't get any hard lines. And then when that's dry, I paint the pupils in with some black. I also carefully paint the black around the outside edge of the eye as well. I painted in the beak, wet on wet as well. I used a grey that I mixed from Antwerp Blue and Van Dyke Brown. I put that on and then I put a little bit more of the Antwerp Blue on and now I've just painted on some new gamboge over the top. I looked at the background down the bottom here and I decided to add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown over the top of the blue. I felt that it was too cold. So that's Van Dyke Brown that I've just painted there and now I'm blending it into the blue. So I'm repeating the colour that I've used on the owl. Then I got my little scrubber brush out and I started to soften some paint edges. Too many hard edges can make the subject look flat. So I wanted to soften them here and there so that they weren't so noticeable. My brush is wet but my paper is dry and I gently rub at the surface and use a tissue to take the paint off. This is a really stiff brush and I have to be careful not to damage the paper with it. When I'd finished softening some of those edges I decided to call it finished. Now all I have to do is clean all my mess up and cut it from my board. So there it is finished. There was a lot of wet on wet work with this painting. I knew if I didn't work wet on wet that I'd get caught up in all of the detail and I'd end up overworking it. So I kept it simple and I suggested most of the feathers rather than paint them in in great detail. One thing I want to say, and I mentioned this in an Instagram post yesterday, and a lot of people could relate to it. Painting in watercolour, for me, is always a struggle. It doesn't really get any easier with practice, I have found. Each painting is different and each painting requires a different approach and each painting can be a battle. That's why these studies are helping me and that's why I'm going to continue to do them. Instead of rushing in and starting a painting, I find that doing these studies is time well spent. So don't be hard on yourself. This is a journey that we're all on and we can struggle together. And that's all I've got for today. 
I will make a full-length tutorial of this owl painting for Patreon. I should have it finished before the end of the year. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button because I'll have another watercolour video for you next week. A little owl is on my list of subject suggestions. That, mm, a little owl is on my list of subject suggestions. Can't say suggestions. 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 After doing that on the graphite study, when I painted the main painting, I left them off. Ash cold pressed watercolour paper, 300 GSM in weight, and I stretched it before I used it. After doing that, when I painted, uh, after doing that, so I kept it simple and I suggested most of it. I suggested most of it. One thing I want to say, and I mentioned this in an Instagram post yesterday, and it seemed to have a lot of people that could relate to it. I knew if I didn't work wet on wet, and I tried to work wet on dry, Each painting is different and each painting requires a different approach. approach. And that's all I've got for today. <laughs>